Hello friends, I'm National Master Rafael Leite and I'll be playing a 10 minute game here on chess.com explaining my moves. This is a special account, authorized. Everybody that loses against me will get their rating points back, okay? This is the London system, accelerated. So uh, he's going to play this and then he's going to develop her pieces, h3, c3, maybe knight d2, maybe knight f3. It's kind of a system. Let's play against it. I play the symmetrical against the London system, okay? So this is far, this is very symmetrical and I'm gonna play symmetrical so far. Bishop d3, probably the main line, and now we'll develop. Not um, being scared of doubling my pawns, I have... Pro oh, <laughs> this, I think this is a common mistake here on the... on the, on the London, the accelerated London, because now the bishop cannot protect anymore, and I will check with my bishop, and he loses the castling. It's not that he's losing the game at this point, but uh, it's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying to play against it. And c5 is an immediate nice idea. I mean, there's always the possibility to sacrifice a piece here. Sorry about that. There's always the possibility to sacrifice a piece here for some pawns because the king is exposed. But because I don't have too many pieces on the attack, I think that's kind of too much speculative. Let's not go for this, I guess. Maybe we should keep developing, but c5 here is very, it's very tempting. Because his king is in the center, let's go for it. c5 played. c5 played, trying to open up lines to attack the king. I think it was better for him to have captured with the rook here, not with the queen. All right, because the queen would be able to uh, go for some counter attacks here. And um, not anymore. You see the difference? Um, she should go for rook takes and king e2. Probably better. We can analyze later. Okay, uh, I can go wild here and sacrifice the bishop, but I don't have to. So, I won't do it. Now he's gonna play b4? Hmm, he's probably gonna play b4. So maybe sacrificing is really a nice idea here. So uh, I capture and then I capture. And I'm threatening to capture. And if he captures, I capture, but I'm not sure. Let's calculate what to do against b4. So takes, takes, bishop goes here. And he can push the pawn later and keep the position closed. I think I go for it. I'll go for it. Now he's got some nice attack on the queen side at this point. So I think, I think the game is pretty much balanced. I wouldn't say that um, I wouldn't say that um, black is better because his king is here. It was too soon to say something about this, to say this. So okay, let's attack the bishop. We can go for some exchanges here, and he can push the pawn, or maybe he can trade. Yeah, he pushed the pawn. Now we got an interesting position here. First of all, I'm removing my king from here because he's gonna check and, and those things. So I'm not allowing that. So at this point, I just want to castle. So, okay, safe king, let's continue. Uh, we probably want to play this. So we're going to prepare it with this. I do have this little concern, but Maybe I can do this and then do this and then maybe take the, the knight away. So we're still trying to punish the king, being in the center. Also, this idea is amazing because he cannot push the pawn. But he can take here. And then, okay, then we take with the pawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I should have played a5, not rook e8. Let's take with the pawns. So now this becomes a really nice target. Now everything changes. We are not uh, interested in pushing the pawn anymore. We are interested in... I, I, of course I can go here and threaten here, but uh, what can he do here, like queen here? Yeah, probably, right? And then he can try to harass my knight. And my knight has to go back. But I win a tempo here because he has to defend it and I can probably play f6 here, which I'm gonna do. 
Because I think it's a good idea to, to take this knight out of here. Okay, okay he can go there. That is true that his knight can maneuver to other places where he will be good. But now, a5 seems powerful. Because he cannot push. It would be awesome if he could push, but he cannot. So we go for exchanges here. If I play here, he goes here. Then what? Isn't it better to simply capture the pawn? Because if he takes here, I do check. Let's go for this. I check and pick up the knight. So we do have some nice things going on at this point, but I think we need to push f6 the soonest possible. I think this is a good move because this doesn't allow f6 because he takes and I do this and he protects. Oh, not at all. And, uh, and, and, and I can also play this immediately. So he's in kind of in trouble. Can he play this? Oh, he went for it. That's very strange. Why would he blunder the knight? Didn't he see it? Probably he didn't see it, which is not very common for... Uh, for a 20... for a 700 player. Wow, many things I can do here. But I think the better, the, the best here is just to, because let's say, oh, it's it's good that I made the move. It was and an, I I was not trying to the move. I was trying to <laughs> to explain my point. Uh, hopefully, I didn't blunder anything. But I was I was trying to say that oh, I can do that and pick up the rook and maybe he's got some counter attack with this this and checkmate me here. So I don't know. I don't wanna I don't wanna allow him to. So to, I I. I did a move, but I was not expecting to do the move, but okay. Uh, hopefully, I didn't blunder anything. So, we need to, first of all, not get mated. So, f5 here is a nice idea, because he, he will try to counter with that. So, this move is very nice, because no longer there is checkmate on the back rank, and my knight can safely go back now, and I'm fighting for the center. So now the point is how to manage the advantage. Okay, now we go and build a... We're gonna build up this is strong attack. Let's just be careful on this pawn. Can we stop this pawn? That's my main concern here. That's my main concern. But I can. You know, knight is gonna go here and here and I'm just taking this square. And the rook will be able to go to this column. I don't know, but the rook can go back. Okay, I think I can hold it. So let's go for this, because it would be nice to go for, a, for an end game at this point. He will try to avoid the queen exchange by playing either queen, king g3 or king g1. g1 is safer. I think he's got to play king g1 and not allow the queen trades. Because if I... Yeah, yeah. This, this is good as well, but... Now he's a little bit in trouble. A little bit in trouble. Because he blundered the rook. <laughs> and I just saw it now. And I just saw it at this point. But he's going to resign now, right? Or he's going to try queen b7 and push the pawn. Okay. There is still some juice to try to get. Let's see what's going to happen here. Is he resigning or is he trying to, to attack me? I think that... Um, yeah, it is possible to push like that. Just gotta go back. Now we are taking uh, good control of the promoting square with two pieces. Now queen b7 is no longer a threat. And there are many ways we can play here, like 
this one and this one, so we are fine. So let's just stop the pawn. I'm threatening here. So, so yeah, he's, he played a nice move, but now I'm threatening to exchange the queens. My pawn is protected. I'm trying, and I am, an, I'm threatening to exchange queens here. Now we just exchange the queens, and this is game over. He's going to resign at this point. Nice game. Will he try to to bring the king? I don't think so. Uh, nice game, very nice one. Let's take a look at the review and get some insights and hopefully learn something from this. Uh, we got a very good accuracy, not the best accuracy in the world, not 80 plus, not 90 plus this time, but uh, it was enough. It was enough to be in advantage the whole game and actually we've never been bad, we've never been worse in this game. So I don't know why the, the, the accuracy was not better than that, but uh, let's take a look. Okay, so this is the symmetric call. And then he went for this, and it's not the end of the world to do this. As you can see, the evaluation doesn't say black is winning here. And taking with the queen actually is better than taking with the rook. That's very nice. I've never seen this. But uh, queen a4 was a slightly better, but it just it's not something we can intuitively understand. So let's just go on. And, um, okay, and then I went for the c5, which is not good. Now he can counter with this. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's good to know. So the best here is to, to challenge the bishop. Okay, not very intuitive stuff here. And, uh, okay, bishop a5. So he's got a good counter here. Actually, white is slightly better in spite of the king being in the center. And he played well here. But uh, check, okay, white is still a little bit better. But when I castled, no, he, he played king e2. No, he played good moves here. He played a very good opening. And uh, okay, I went for this and now rook to c1 and he's fine. But he went for this exchange, which doesn't help him a lot because now he's got this target. Probably he thought I was going to take with the queen and then he was going to, you know, march with the pawns and bring the rook and be really good in the position, almost winning already. But uh, that that's not gonna happen. So and then he bring the knight, and okay, this was a good move because this comes with a tempo here. We are threatening to get the queen, so he's got to protect, and he protected very finely. And I said I was gonna play here B f6, which is the best move, but for some reason <laughs> I didn't go for the move that I said I was going to play. <laughs> and uh, and that okay, he would go back here, and I could play five, which I think is very nice to push the pawn, to, to try a pawn break in the center when the king is in the center. So I should definitely have gone for that. But a5 is very speculative. I'm hoping for him to make a mistake, which he didn't uh, do, but he, did, he made an even worse move because now his king is exposed and my pieces are coming. Uh, the point here, which I tried to provoke, was this move. And after this, he would lose the queen. But uh, he went for those exchanges, and now his king is... And now this is complete... Oh my gosh, I got checkmate here. <laughs> I forgot the, 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 the aim, the, the, the goal in chess is to checkmate the king. I simply for, forgot that the goal is to checkmate, and I thought that the goal is to get pieces and put in the pocket, you know, just collecting wood, and, um, and, <laughs> and I completely got uh, attracted and collected wood. And collecting wood instead of checkmating the king's, uh, my opponent's king. Okay, so this is this goes for checkmate. <laughs> Let's show this. Oh, this is insane. Why didn't I do it? So there's checkmate here, and it comes uh, really fast. So I just went for picking up wood. But what should have played here? Because it's hard to play as white here, but he can play it. He can play it. Not easy. Not easy. We need to to say that's not easy. But uh, he's, he's holding, he's holding. Uh, he could hold more than playing this. Okay, I went for collecting wood here. And I could also try to pick up the rook here. But uh, as I said, there are some tactical shots here. Uh, let's just grab the piece here. And we are winning. Then he protected it. We went for this f5 idea. Maybe queen a6 was stronger. We play this uh, idea and then we bring it. And he can play rook b1, like we said. And uh, this is holding a little bit more, but I would probably check and exchange the queens with the check. And after the king moves, I would probably go back and uh, play defensively here, like playing here, playing here, and, uh, and trying to stop the pawn 
which is not the best approach probably. Let's let's show this, which is probably not the best approach. Let's say King G3, you know, this is probably the best for humans. And now he's actually, his king is, oh my gosh. Yeah, I would probably be in hard times trying to stop this very active king here. Maybe rook e7 was better here because my king wants to go into play, but even, even uh, probably the best is g5, not allowing his king to enter. So I would have to find this move and I'm being honest, I don't know if I was going to play g5 here because I don't know, I don't know if I was going to do it. Uh, he can try to check me and go here and it's not easy to play this position. So yeah, definitely he should have played rook b1. It was going to be more resilient. Maybe he's got a good fight. Maybe he can come with the king like we said and maybe he can even draw or even win the game if I made uh, one or two mistakes in a row, but now he just blundered the rook and then this is just game over. So uh, that shows that you need to chill when you're like, this is not easy to play as white here, but uh, definitely hanging the rook immediately, not the best way to go. So he should again, rook b1 and only then try to bring the king. So this shows that you need to calm down when you're playing chess. So white is a piece down, but it's not the end of the world. He still could have uh, put problems to me and try to find the best moves or good moves. So I think that's the main lesson for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your audience and see you next time.